What's up sa inyo mga pamangkikers? Welcome to the 12th episode. Grabe, nakaka-12 na bala tayo. 12th episode of Hashtag Eat, Sleep, Breathe Football Podcast. May, may pa-sound effects pa si Tito. <laughs> may pa-sound effects. Yan. 12th episode of our podcast. Thank you so much for um, you know tuning in and maraming maraming salamat ulit sa ating mga taga-panood. Di ko na patatagalin. Let's introduce the gang. Medyo depleted kami ngayon but here we go. All the way from Italia, our friend David Abelia, Johnny Pompa of the What's Up Football Show, the What's Up Formula One Show. the WhatsApp show and the upcoming the Bad Titos and Titas late night show kasama din natin diyan si Glenn Casas all the way from the south oh, di ba nandito lang yan sa Pinas all the way from the south um from the six yard box burgers and sports and makakasama din natin sa the Bad Titos and Titas late night show abangan niyo yan this will be on Friday pero bago ang lahat nakaka na pala tayo hindi ko na hindi ako makapaniwala so isang masigabong palakpakan muna tayo diyan <laughs> tuwang tuwa ako sa mga sound effects ko ngayon <laughs> magagalaw din kita Okay, so uh, let's get down into business. All Let's go into all the seriousness uh, that revolves around Philippine football. As you've heard, this week is very eventful for Philippine football as we got many updates from the Philippine Football Federation and the Philippines Football League powered or brought to you by Qatar Airways. So, simula na natin with the Philippine Football Federation announcements. Ito na nga. Um, as you can see on our slides, um, they have... Uh, Uh, laid out the protocols for the training sessions. Um, basahin nyo na lang, yan na yun. But it's in accordance with the IATF and the Games and Amusements Board as well as DOH for the safety of the players, staff, and everyone working in the Philippines uh, Football League. Um, so, yun yung magiging protocols nila. We've also had uh, these updates. Kaya nga sabi ko, after, four, uh, after more than four months, basically of uh, no football here in the country the clubs participating in the philippines football league brought to you by qatar airways are now allowed to return to their training sessions in preparation for the upcoming season pff president mr nonong araneta said that all the players must undergo uh, the necessary tests first before they can start their training sessions to make sure that no one will spread the virus within the team and the organization after testing negative for covid 19 they can then proceed with their training sessions in compliance with the guidelines that you're seeing right now uh, that has been approved by the iatf gab and doh so yan ang ating unang balita sobrang ganda because we already have the guidelines laid out Um, yan ay kailangan lang sundin ng ating mga uh, clubs. Kailangan lang sundin yan ng participating clubs ng PFL. Moving on, um, ano pa ba yung mga balita natin dito? Alright, so basically in another news brought upon by uh, Sir Nonong Aranet as well, through his interview with our dear friend Aaron Bayato of Radio Pilipinas Dos, um, he mentioned, eto, basahin nga natin to. Um, he mentioned that uh, a possibility of a new club to come in the upcoming season. Uh, here's the short clip from Aaron Bayato's interview with Sir Nonong through Radio Pilipinas. Uh... So, yes, whatever happens, uh, and uh, I think the man, uh, meron namang sigurong sasalo kung just in case na. Uh, Yeah, just in case na unfortunately na na maano sila nung ali sa league or whatever or hindi ano pero so far wala pa namang sinasabi ganun na uh, official. Mm-hmm. So as we stand po uh, Sir Nong, uh, we're looking at uh, six teams ulit with the additional of the Ascals development team and of course uh, Global Kaya, Mendiola and Stallion. Tama po no? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and then uh, hopefully tomorrow meron isang papasok then uh, na no. So, yeah, sinabi namin, you just have to apply, no? Uh, pero, siyempre, kailangan mag-apply muna sila, di ba? Uh, for licensing, kasi pwede na mating i-wave muna yan, kasi may pandemic, gano'n. Okay. No? 
Uh, just in case baka ma- mayroong isa na direct dadagdag so okay lang yun. Okay, abangan po namin yung club na yun. Ah uh, matanong ko na rin taga Luzon po ba Visayas or Luzon, na Luzon naman natin. Luzon, ah, Luzon, Luzon yung club. Okay po. Now uh no sir nong uh, thank you very much po dun sa mga football related stuff now uh, siguro final question na lang po with regard sa man po sa inyong uh, function as our chef division po for Team Pilipinas sa uh, Olympic So that was uh, Aaron Bayato and uh, President or PFF President Mr. Nonong Areneta with their discussion of the possibility of a new club to come in. So, medyo exciting yan. Also, uh, earlier today, we had the virtual press conference with the Philippine Football Federation headed by Mr. Nonong Areneta, the President, uh, the Secretary General, Attorney Ed Gastanes, um, ASCAL's team manager, Dan Palami, and PFL commissioner, uh, Coco Torre. Uh, on their, on their uh, virtual press conference, uh, Mr. Nonong Araneta bared that the PFF will receive two tranches of assistance from FIFA, the world's football governing body, amounting to a total of $1 million US dollars. The first one will be given this July, and the other one, I believe, will be given out in February next year. Um, also, Attorney Ed Gastanes and Nonong Araneta um, said that Qatar Airways is still around to support the Philippines Football League, wherein they've already remitted 50% of their sponsorship to the PFF. Another thing, uh, PFL Commissioner Coco Torres said that um, the clubs are now um, the clubs were actually uh, or underwent the um, uh, testing earlier in the PFF office in uh, Pasig City where in uh, it's a mandatory test that they need to take before they can go ahead and uh, start their training sessions um also um through another discussion with uh sir coco Torre, uh the pfl commissioner he said that testing before matches isn't required as of the moment it's still going to be discussed by the federation and the league itself um however the uh tests uh, to be conducted uh, during or after the training sessions towards the buildup of the uh, league uh, season will be covered by the PFL. He was he also stated that all is well after the approval of IATF to resume the training. Right now we have the clubs undergoing the testing. Once you're negative, you can immediately train. Testing before matches isn't required, like what I mentioned. And uh, he left us with this great words: "Football will resume. It will never." Die. So yeah, ang pahayag ni Sir Coco Torre earlier in our um in our virtual presser headed by the Philippines uh, Football League. And uh, last, uh, probably the last news for tonight before we head into our you know uh, our discussions and all. Um, as you've noticed on um, social media and everywhere else, uh, it's sad to say, but uh, Ceres Negros FC will undergo restructuring wherein they will have to, um, um, or uh, its owner, Leo Reyanson, has to give way uh, to the upcoming owners of, um, um, the upcoming co- uh, owner, sorry, of uh, Ceres Negros FC. So, um, as of the moment, uh, Ace Bright, the general manager, is in talks with the upcoming uh, sponsor or the upcoming owner and um, of the of the club. Once everything is settled, they will announce the new name, the management, uh, and the management. Sorry, of the uh, uh, of the club itself. So, um, medyo malungkot na balita. Um, uh, we send our deepest regards as well to our dear friend John Eleven Gozon of uh, Ultra Ceres. We know this is very hard for you. Uh, we know this is very hard to take. But um, as you've mentioned, you will rise from the ashes. I'm definitely sure of that. Uh, it's just uh, probably restructuring of the club for the better, uh, and um, probably once they get back, um, they will get back stronger. And um, you know, it, it's just it's just gonna be a new chapter for the um, for uh, for the Negros based football club. So, um, mabilisan lang. Uh, I just want to talk about all these news na nakuha natin. David, all the way there from Italy. Anong masasabi mo sa nagsimulang testing ng mga players kanina sa PFF office and also yung balita na we get assistance from FIFA and everything that we have discussed uh, in this uh, quick news rundown na meron tayo. 
Uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon here from Italy. I know you guys are shocked, like, how come I'm abroad? That's another story. But uh, yeah, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things have been discussed uh, a while ago this morning. Uh, a lot of good updates at the same time. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, aside from the one million being divided into two uh, different pays, I think there's also an extra five hundred thousand dollars to help also with the women's uh, with regards to women's football, if I'm not mistaken. So that's a total of a. Uh, one million and five hundred thousand uh, dollars. So that's a uh, good uh, from the part part of FIFA, and I'm happy that uh, it can help us uh, in um, you know slowly rebuilding the the FA our our FA and all. And it's also nice that we're getting updates with regards to you know um, how the PFL uh, is going to start its uh, module that they show to the uh, to the uh, IATF, and uh, hopefully uh, you know. Uh, we can slowly, slowly, once uh, we, uh, how do you say this, those actions are being used towards our players and all, hopefully we can get um, improvements like, uh, you know, uh, swap tests and all because we really need that our players to be safe. You know, obviously we're happy. Obviously what Coco, uh, our commissioner, uh, PFL commissioner said, Coco Torres said that, of course, it's uh, it's not going to die. But at the same time, you know, uh, we need to, uh, care about our players because uh, aside from you know they're still human beings and they are playing our beloved sport uh, for a living so we also need to uh, take care of that for them and at the same time um, I I really feel bad I, I know it's a reconstruction don't get me wrong I know it's a reconstruction of the team but obviously like um, with uh, with how do you say this uh, LRY um, Mr. Jansson with what he did to Ceres Negros um, it's rare to see a Filipino entrepreneur, a Filipino businessman, give so much sacrifice, so much for a game that isn't even popular. Sadly to say, isn't popular in our country, mm. and we re and we rarely see those kind of individuals here in the Philippines. So um, what I can say is that I'm happy that he was part of the Filipino um, football community. I'm happy that he was able to uh, assign the adequate. Um, individuals to uh, to be able to bring Ceres to what it is today. Um, one of the contenders for the AFC Cup, mm -hmm. uh, almost qualifying for the AFC Champions League, and they might, uh, you know, um, if everything goes well, they they might even qualify uh, directly there. So uh, again, regards to all of the Ceres Negros the Negros based fans there. It's gonna be hard to adjust, but don't worry. As you still have a club, but uh, the reconstructions, uh, you know, you kind of get used to that. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. Coming from uh, someone who also um, experienced losing a club here in the Philippines, uh, as you all know, David is a you know a diehard fan of the Davao Aguilas FC, which also folded uh, around November 2018, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. Uh, it's really tough. Uh, I mean, uh, it's it's you're not basically losing your club. Probably the identity because of the name itself, uh, being Saras Negros FC being changed once the new management and the new owners come in. But nevertheless, the history is still going to be there. We will still know that you're the three-time PFL champions, defending uh, champions of the Copa Paulino Alcantara, and also once dubbed as the interzonal champions of the ASEAN region for the AFC Cup. Now, Glenn, you know, um, as someone who, you know, um, who has been following uh, the news as well here in the Philippines, what do you want to say with regard to all of these uh, positive uh, news that we can take? First of all, good uh, good evening sa mga nanonood, to all those watching. And uh, yeah, actually, that's uh, really shocking news. First is um, a lot's happened today, so we can really say that... Uh, Today has been one of those pivotal days in Philippine football, mm -hmm. both the good and the bad. So yeah, with the good ones, we've heard about uh, updates about what uh, what we are about to expect with the upcoming campaign, with the PFL, with everything that uh, we were really asking about when it comes to the national uh, when it comes to our national league. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, knowing that the uh, support has never ceased and knowing that. Uh, there is more. Th uh, there is a lot of resources that we could utilize to uh, make this happen. It's uh, really a good thing to hear. It's really reassuring that uh, 
there's some investment coming in. The only important thing for me, at least, is to make sure that it gets utilized in the best way possible. I mean, to uh, to make sure that it goes where it's supposed to go for um, the the proper study to be uh, to be made to make sure that the investment would be put in the right place. And if all of those key in together, I'm I'm pretty certain that the uh, the league would be moving forward uh, smoothly, or at least if not smoothly, at least it would be moving forward, and that we football fans would grow in numbers as well. But what really saddens me, and it's I think a more well, I'm not sure if for others it's a highlight of the le- uh, of the news today, but the highlight of the news today is the uh, is the development with our team in Ceres Negros, one of the top contenders supposedly for not just uh, our local league but also for our regional league or for our re- regional competition as well. So at the moment before this even happened, if I recall correctly. Uh, their AFC campaign, they are still first, in, or they are still the top ones in their group. Mm-hmm. If it resumes, they will continue as such. So uh, the good news is it really doesn't affect it in a way, but I'm really uh, feeling it the same way as the other fans are. Although, yeah, I am not really, um, I'm not. Uh, in, a, in the local sense, I support, of course, a different team, especially when uh, Ceres and our team would uh, uh, would be fighting. It would really be something that I would support my team, of course. But I also support Ceres, uh, Ceres when it comes to uh, international leagues. I watch their matches because they're not just representing themselves. They're not just representing Negros. They're pretty much representing the quality of the football that uh, our local leagues is able to uh, to create. So this is a product of competition here locally, and they have built it to be able to withstand challenges from the regional teams as well. And it's really saddening to see that uh, just because of, the, well, um, one of the biggest things that occurred is the pandemic that really did a number on a lot of these clubs. Mm-hmm. And that's what really saddens me as well. It's that we um, we were expecting that a lot would have been uh, a lot would have happened when the had the league started where it had had this pandemic not hit us but now it has hit us really hard and this is not just a team this is one of the key figures when it comes to our local league so it's really really um, a surprise and uh, at the same time uh, I, my heart goes to all of the fans who are um, through and through Ceres so. Uh, yeah, I I am with you guys, and I really hope that this turns out for the better. There's still hope because the club still exists. Let's hope that the identity can be kept. But sad to say, I heard that the name would no longer be the same. But I really hope that the environment, the the uh, the community that it has created, it all uh, it all will remain the same. All up to you guys. It would always be up to you guys. So that's all I can say. All right. Thank you so much for those thoughts. Now, before we go over to one of our um, uh, friend out here, Kent, who just came into our podcast, a quick shout out to everyone watching, uh, especially to Coach Maor Rosen, who's watching all the way from Spain. Uh, good afternoon, Coach. Um, he's a former coach of uh, Kaya FC as well as um, some grassroots team here in the Philippines. Uh, would also like to give a quick shout out to Sir Ryan Cruz of LGR. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And um, who else? All of the people watching us, maraming maraming salamat sa panonood. It's it's very um, you know uh, heartwarming to see a lot of people watching our stream as early as now, even before we have our guests. And uh, yun, uh, I'm just happy to see that you want to be updated with all the news that we do have in Philippine football. So yep, thank you so much. Isang malaking applause para sa inyo. Now uh, let's move over to uh, Kent. Uh, Parangent of um, you know as you can see with this, with a the shirt, he's a Loyola FC fan, uh, been a Meralco Manila FC fan. Then afterwards, experience what uh, the fans of Ceres Negras FC are experiencing as of the moment. Siguro, what what can you uh, what can you say to these uh, people who is experiencing a very hard time, knowing that next or, or this season uh, it'll be different. That they will not probably see uh, Ceres' uh, name out there. Uh, I hope that they keep uh, Negros in their name. But uh, nevertheless, what can you say to these fans who are currently experiencing what I believe you are exp- uh, you have experienced as well when Meralco Manila or Loyola FC uh, folded la- the last time? 
Um, first of all, uh, good evening sa lahat ng mga nanonood. Um, nung nabalitaan natin yung news about Ceres kanina, um, it was uh, the feeling that I had um, when the senior team of Loyola disbanded. Medyo ano, medyo parang nanumbalik ng kaunti. Nag-flashback. Though di naman na <laughs> in a certain way, syempre, it's not it's not the club that you support. Eh. So, medyo ilag ka na dun. Pero you feel, you just feel the pain of the fans. Um, especially, Ceres set the benchmark for local club football here. In terms of administration, players, uh, and everything. Um, no, no, no. Um, let's give our uh, our uh, thanks dun sa lahat ng mga nag-work for the transfer. Kasi, ano yan eh, uh, mahirap yan eh, in the first place eh. With the uncertainty of local football here, we mm-hmm. have an on- ongoing pandemic, so you wouldn't really expect someone to to really uh, take over. But they were able to do it, and with that, uh, we give them their due credit. Mahirap yan. Um, for the fans, um, well, I can. Mahirap sabihin kasi na uh, everything's gonna uh, parang kumalma or something because you can see the agony. You can see the pain that the fans have, especially on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, siguro ang masasabi ko lang ano ngayon, um, ano eh, um, no one expected this in the first place. Well, atay na bigla eh. Atay na bigla, atay na apekto in a way that really the club we might not support centers, but it's integral to the local football community. And it's an integral part of the league. So, ano yun eh, di pa natin alam if the new ownership would retain the Negros name or something. Um, but I'd like the fans to dwell on the legest, legacy that what Ceres did for Philippine football. Um, yeah, that's an achievement in itself. Eh. Uh, they came in um, in the PFF National Club Championships way back 2013, as far as I know. Then won it all, then entered the UFL, started from Division 2. Then in the first division at the top flight, they won the league title right away. Then AFC, um, four straight AFC Cup appearances, if you include that, uh, the current year, and three league titles. Um, Ako naman naniniwala ako na, ano eh, na it's not the it's not the last time for uh hindi ako naniniwala na wala wala na talaga yung Ceres. It's just they're going through the hard time and we know we don't know man LRY. He really loves uh, football, Philippine football in general and through his club uh he wants to help. So um what I can say is hope springs eternal, and um, let's give props. Uh, let's give. Uh, well, dependent. Di mo naman mabibigyan ng support ng yung club eh. So um, for the fans, if uh, let's continue to support Philippine football, even if ganito yung nangyari, there's no other option eh, but to move forward eh. And kung ano man yung, I'm sure that with what happened to Ceres, um, they will. Ano, they will. B- bounce back not maybe not now but uh, in the near future i feel for no maybe for response so so may pit na yaka para sa lahat yeah so sobrang sobrang bigat actually i mean kahit ako uh, ramdam ko rin yung bigat for Ceres Negros FC fans knowing na alam yun, parang uh, we we cannot say that this is an end of an era for them it's basically you're basically turning another page or another chapter of your very illustrious book yun nga na, na nasabi nga natin Dave they're a multi-titled team here in the Philippines uh, the best 
uh, one of the best, or if not the best, uh, clubs who ever graced the football pitch here in the Philippines and abroad. Uh, um, as you all know, they are the only ones who made it into um, uh, Champions League qualifiers who almost made it um, twice uh, when they went up against uh, a club in China and uh, more recently against FC Tokyo. But nevertheless, like what I said, you're just basically turning another page of your very beautiful book and uh, I hope to all of the fans of Saras Negros FC fans don't lose hope uh, kayo malungkot. Uh, the players are still there I believe the players are still there and they they will be the ones to uh, you know uh, give you uh, hope and the courage uh, para dito um, also um, I just want to uh, touch on this kasi uh, on the virtual press conference earlier um there were still questions that we would like to raise however we would want to uh the pff and the pfl to uh, you know uh make a statement about it we will wait basically for their statements about it but siguro kunin ko lang yung thoughts uh, nyo about this one um like what mentioned uh, earlier they under uh, went the uh testing and if they tested negative for the COVID-19 uh, PCR test, then they basically uh, can schedule their training sessions wherein they will have groups of, uh, I think, maximum of 10 in a football pitch and 30 minutes interval every team. Now, um, while there are going to be tests to be done after each training sessions that they will be conducting, um, there aren't any uh, details yet as of the moment, no? Uh, there are no details yet regarding the um, protocols uh, once the game starts. So l- let's start with uh, David, since uh, I think Serie A uh, is someone that or something that we can emulate uh, regarding this. Uh, we've seen uh, Bundesliga uh, do this, uh, Premier League and Serie A, but knowing that Italy has been impacted uh, hugely of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, siguro ikaw, what practices from uh, the Serie uh, would you like to see the PFF and the PFL um, emulate? Sorry, I got muted. Uh, okay, so uh, there are a lot of things I obviously uh, with regards to the safety of the players, you know, um, before entering the uh, the vicinity or other practices or it could be hopefully games sooner or later. I hope that uh, they could uh, do a sort of uh, checkup, like, not like check, like really quick checkup. The usual thermal gun um, uh, permit, saying that okay, I'm, uh, I'm I have t- t- tested myself negative, and I can go inside. Uh, they usually do it through a QR code instead of having to do it through paper, so that it's contactless at the same time, and uh, um, uh, usually, uh, you know, the when it comes to practices. Uh, Usually, the locker room is does it exist? It's in a uh, separate uh, field. It's in a field. It's not in a room. Mm-hmm. It's where so that there's proper distancing. So uh, they could just put their bags, dress up there on the field, and then go to the other, uh, you know, to the other pitch. So uh, that's. Uh, but you know, with the lack with the lacking resources that we have, hopefully um, the PFL can also obviously like try to find solutions on that because we cannot let our players um you know um gather themselves in on uh in the locker room so that's one of the things and uh uh hopefully uh the usual social distancing the real the social distancing is a very fundamental thing obviously like yeah um we try to make as less contact as possible you know but uh maybe some pointers on how can we you know on how can they have contact once contact is done sterilization everything so hopefully um we can try to emulate that and hopefully the pff can try to co- copy and at the same time you know get inspiration from those so yeah all right thank you so much david and i think that signals our break for now uh babalikan natin si glenn and si kent with their thoughts on what 
uh, can be done uh, sa ating protocols once we resume the games or once we start the games of the 2020 Philippines Football League brought to you by Qatar Airways. So, dyan lang kayo mga pamangkikers. We'll just take a short break and once you come back, we'll discuss more about the news that we got and uh, probably our expectations for the upcoming uh, guests that we do have which is Coach Roxy Dorlas and Coach Noel Marcaida of the Loyola FC Academy. Dito lang yan sa hashtag Eat, sleep, breathe, football pod. Maraming salamat sa pag-stay tuned. Ingat! And see you soon. The joke lang. <laughs> Thank you for uh, staying with us. This is your Tito J, Glenn, David, uh, and uh, David, and Kent. Uh, ang inyong Eat, Sleep, Breathe Football Gang dito sa 12th episode of Hashtag Eat, Sleep, Breathe Football. Isang masigabong palagpakan! talaga ako sa gamit kung ano eh soundboard <laughs> anyway yun nga maraming maraming salamat ulit sa panonood I just wanna give a uh, shout out to all of those watching Gian Carlo Katahan Christopher Andrew Datu Coach Maor Michael Manuel uh, Carson si Bebe Loves ko nanonood din maraming maraming salamat uh, magkikita din tayo on Sunday ah uh, <laughs> Uh, yun, nawala ako sa ano ka. Anyway, so yun na nga. Before we uh, ask uh, these two gentlemen na uh, regarding their thoughts or whatever na gusto nila makita pa with the PFF and the PFL, isang announcement muna. Um, ito, kunin ko na para sa inyo. Supposedly, today is the last day or today is the day that we are going to give out these scarves or uh, put it out on raffle. However... Due to, um, you know, due to uh, public demand, wow, kala mo meron. Due to public and uh, consistent demand, maraming salamat. Um, ine-extend po namin ang aming raffle or ang pag-submit ng inyong entries. So, instead of this Wednesday show, we will uh, draw or we will uh, announce the winners or randomize the winners this Saturday, uh, hindi Sunday, so move lang tayo ng isang araw for our fan engagement podcast wherein these two scarves are going away. 
uh, these two scarves. Thanks again to uh, Sir Christopher Datu of uh, Red Rooster Sports PH. So, maraming maraming salamat. If you want to grab your own, kung hindi kayo nakasali sa raffle or kung hindi kayo nanalo, you can grab one for only 500 pesos. Nakalagay dito, Pilipinas lang palaban. Uh, you can watch our review sa ating uh, YouTube channel sa Ang Tito Mong Football Vlogger. Panoorin nyo yung review natin doon. Napakaganda nung uh, scarf at napaganda din ang pagkaka-review ni Tito at ng kanyang best friend. So, head over to Ang Tito Mong Football Vloggers uh, YouTube channel and watch our review para makita nyo yung instructions. No? Nandun yung instructions, nandun sa video. Hanapin nyo na lang kung saan. Pero sana panoorin nyo yung buong video para mapansin naman ni YouTube na no? may nanonood sa atin. Uh, ayun. And then... What else? What else do we have to announce? Wala na, siguro yun na lang. Uh, ulitin na lang natin yung announcement na yun para sa mga hindi nakasama sa ating stream for today. Okay, so puntaan na natin yung thoughts ni uh, Glenn uh, Casas of uh, the Six Yard Box uh, Burgers and Sports na hinihintay pa rin naman yung burgers. Uh, David uh, has already given his thoughts. Ikaw naman, anong masasabi mo regarding these news or siguro mga suggestions mo pa uh, for the upcoming uh, PFL season uh, protocol as well sa pagbabalik natin sa football? Well, I think yung safety procedures that they are uh, undertaking right now is uh, good na rin kasi at the, uh, it's following the basic set of protocols that are currently being followed by the leagues who have already resumed. So at least we know na in a way it, uh, it is effective. It's something that uh, we should really mimic. But at the same time, we also need to make sure na all of the players are uh, all of the uh, the teams are compliant with this as well. Because sometimes, one thing that I don't like about when it comes to implementing rules is yung pagkam sa harap ng camera or when it comes to the first week, the first month, it'll be exactly as uh, as how it was specified. It'll be followed to a T. However, yun nga, as uh, lenient uh, as uh, the time passes habang walang cases sa foot for example kung hin- and sana ganito nga yung mangyari na hindi magkaroon ng uh, contamination or ng uh, pag-spread ng virus within the teams and the, the spectators and all sometimes because of that it would lead to some leniency na rin I mean take a look at how we're implementing the current rules as of now I I can see people outside I mean literally I can take this camera right now and take a stroll along the road and see how uh, much of the rules haven't be, uh, aren't being followed so I'm really hoping that they will be really strict about this because yun nga, the um, the chances of these players getting infected especially now that they will be risking themselves to exposure by playing by practicing by being in constant communication or by being in constant uh, uh, within constant um, distance within other or uh, with other players it's really something that they need to be aware of and they really need to take care of themselves now uh, for anything else that they can do well I think they, uh, I think they pretty much. Ako, for my, because I'm not really a specialist in that field. As a matter of fact, eh, nahugut lang ako ni Tito a two, a two or three weeks ago. Eh. So uh, when it comes to the specialization, I'm just bringing out my sentiments as a fan. So uh, one of the other things that I think they should really focus on as well is. Uh, is to give assurances to the people, to the public, kung paano nga ba magraran yung ating league. If they are able to uh, release a guideline on how the actual league would follow, that would give us some sort of assurance that a league is about to come. And I'm really hoping that uh, they can put one out really soon. Ayan. Uh, thank you so much, Papi Glenn. Now, let's head over to uh, Kent. Ikaw naman, Kent. Uh, anything else that you'd like to add sa mga nasabi ni David and Glenn? Siguro um, regarding that, uh, tungkol sa guidelines, um, we all have this, uh, since the issue na European League into action, halos lahat talaga nandun na eh. Um, ano, um, we just need to pick and to implement what might be useful for us. Um, sabi niya kanina ni, ano, ni, ni Attorney Ed sa PFF press conference, we don't know what will work pa eh. Or what won't work, because um, 
ano na ba yan? Um, training pala yung pinapayagan. And yung mga um, guidelines doon, syempre, hindi pa yun sure kung talagang may implement into full effect. Pero ano lang, ang suggestion ko lang talaga, hanggat kaya, um, constant testing of players, of lahat ng involved. Kasi doon mo lang talaga malalaman na ano eh, na, na if may may infect And you, we need to be as accurate as possible when detecting someone because you'll never know. Like, um, this, despite them training, nakikihalubilo pa rin sila with other people outside training as an individual. So you really need to test and test and test even if, well, it might be costly, but um, you ensure the safety of, uh, of the players, the coaches, and the staff because it's a contact sport. So... Mm, Besides that, um, ano lang siguro, um, for the guide, uh, ewan ko lang kung kasta dito, pero since walang fans sa uh, stands, um, they should, uh, kaya nang sabi ni Commissioner Coco kanina, they will try to uh, increase or uh, um, enhance the fan experience even if uh, it's online. So I really, I'm really counting on that because... Um, As you can see, two leagues are only two leagues are allowed to resume training or eventually operate. It's the PBA, PBA and PFL, so it would be a good opportunity for um, for the mainstream sports fans or the mainstream masses to see what the what PFL offers. So I hope they really uh, capitalize on that and um, make some steps that will gather interest about the league and the sport. Ayun. Thank you so much, Ken. Ako naman siguro masasabi ko lang dun is uh, while we have all of this uh, all of these guidelines uh, laid out uh, importante pa rin dyan is we follow the um, guidelines or the safety measures uh, given to us by DOH, IATF and uh, all of the governing bodies around us. Also, um, before my next point, I'd just like to give a quick shout out as well to Sir Lloyd Uh, Iniguez of uh, Kronos Athletics. Uh, if you were able to see the uh, commercials or the ads that we had earlier, you know, and just head over to Kronos Athletics uh, Facebook page for more details on how you can get your personalized jersey. So, you know, um, we have this protocols or guidelines, whatever it is. So, then uh, implement strictly for us to be able to be safe and all, and you know, just make sure that wala tayo magiging problema. Uh, regarding uh, the uh, Sere situation, uh, we've actually got uh, a lengthy um, comment from Coach Moor Rosen. I, I just want to uh, you know share it with you guys who are you know just listening. Uh, gusto nyo makita yung comment, just go down the comment section. He said that what is happening with Sere as a common denominator with what happened to Loyola Meralco, Davo Aguila, Union FC, and more. When a club has exclusive dependence on an owner, the risk that the club will disappear is always high because the clubs in the um, uh, Philippines are created from the businessmen and not from the people. The clubs, as in most countries of the world, represents neighborhoods, cities, regions, and over time sponsors participate in the into the clubs to help economically, but the owners continue to be the partners of the clubs. What happened to Ceres is just a symptom but not a disease. Philippine football should already choose whether it wants to continue fighting the symptoms or directly to attack the disease. So that's a very great point coming from Coach Moore who's been uh, seeing uh, football all over the world, uh, coaching in Uruguay, Spain, uh, running around. Uh, he's also been to China. Yes, we do get the experience. However, There's just one point that I'd like to say about it, and I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna use this point of mine to be the point of everyone else in this podcast. You know, this is just my opinion about it. Uh, you can bash me if you want to, but you know, uh, my opinion about this is that number one, football is not the number one sport here in the Philippines. While we want to instill to the people out here in the Philippines that football is a beautiful sport, football is a beautiful game, it's very difficult. Because, you know, as you all know, basketball, volleyball are the primary sports here in the Philippines. And ngayon lang naman siguro, it's just now that football is uh, coming up 
or football is getting more attention um, uh, regarding uh, you know uh, or getting more attention and thanks as well to uh, the Philippine Football Federation the Philippines Football League through their continuous efforts for them to be able to get these sponsors of the league for them to be able to uh, bring out the best of the clubs as well so uh, while we want that while eventually that's what we want to have here in the Philippines like what Spain uh, France Germany or any other European countries that has uh, you know um, their neighborhood their city or they represent uh, their their themselves uh, like for example if you go to um, uh, East London with West Ham you go to uh, uh, Barcelona you have uh, you know FC Barcelona you go to Madrid you have two clubs out there that's what we want to have however uh, we need these sponsors to help us out uh, the reason why we have probably dependence on these sponsors is because they they have the financial capabilities or capacity to uh, make sure that these clubs exist if they are not around or if let's say that these investors or sponsors are not around just like what coach maor said they will really uh, fold or they will really die however in this case um what's what's different with the Ceres situation right now is that with davao aguilas fc and meralco uh, manila fc for example they weren't able to pass it on to another investor. They weren't able to get someone to support the club or to continue the club. But right now, what we have heard from Ceres Negros FC is that they are in the process of getting a new sponsor, getting a new owner, and then eventually they will change the name of the club so that the operation of the club is continuous. It's just that the name of the club will change. Probably the management, it's going to be an overhaul of the management. But most likely the players are going to be there. They're going to stay the same, uh, different colors maybe. However, um, you know, uh, at least they were able to get or they're getting someone to pass on the, uh, let's say, responsibilities of carrying uh, the flag or um, you know uh, the budget of uh, Ceres Negros FC because if they were able to do it or if it's something that they were able to do then that means that the club didn't die they just underwent uh, cosmetic surgery you know so uh, well well I really uh, agree with the uh, coach Maor's um, comments like what I said it's just something that can be manipulated or it's just something that can be fixed here in the country and uh, once we have independence from these sponsors once the local government units uh, you know uh, the uh, the cities the provinces starts noticing football here in the Philippines like oh this is a big thing we have Qatar Airways as a sponsor yada 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 so long that starts then we can say that we can have independence from these sponsors and we can have them as partners not owners of the club itself so um, that's my point I, I think we have another one from Curson Graza. I said J League clubs were also dependent on its owners to survive before having an organic connection with the community they are located. See, that's what we are talking about. You have to have someone first to uh, build up the momentum for you. Then afterwards, once your locality sees that, once your locality sees that um, it's going to be working for them, it's going to be working for you, then most likely they're going to take that away from you and then they will operate it themselves. So, um, Yun lang siguro yung aking point. Um, shout out to Coach Moore and uh, Kerson for those wonderful uh, thoughts that you do have. Now, um, a few minutes before we introduce our guests, uh, I just want to ask uh, you guys. Uh, let's start first with Kent. Of course, this is your, you know, this is your your club. This is your club. What do you expect or what do you want to hear from the coaches of your beloved club in terms of, uh, you know, grassroots development and all? Um, for me, um, I have seen it all in the past, um, since 2018, since the club, um, the, the Loyola FC Academy uh, reestablished itself. Um, I'm very, very, not to be biased, but I'm very proud of the progress we made over the last two years. Um, coming from a small pitch in Nomads, um, with only less than, I guess, less than 30 kids there. Now, it's a thriving setup right now. 
and it's competing well in local and international tournaments. I just want to see. I want just. I just want people to see na um, hindi papa tayo club. Loyola is not dead. Wala lang senior team, pero Loyola is not dead. And I think um, it would be a good model for other clubs how to rebuild, how to have a working academy system, and how to do things well in the grassroots level. Ayun. And, um, sorry. Okay, thank you so much, Ken. And I just want to correct you. Uh, hindi wala lang senior team, wala pang senior team. Kasi, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> feeling ko, dyan din <laughs> naman, ang, dyan naman ang punta niyan. Ikaw naman, Glenn. Uh, what can you, uh, or what do you want to hear, what are you expecting in our discussion with these two wonderful coaches? Um, obviously, I, I want to get more of their perspective with regards to Loyola because compliments again, you know, to how do you say this to Loyola that they have a how do you say this uh, a youth team, mm. and uh, you know it's not really how do you say this it's not easy to handle it. And um, to be honest, I'm gonna be more on the side uh, here. You know, I just you know um, this is like this is literally I, I think dedicated to Kent as twice wearing the damn kit in the first place so <laughs> so you know i just really want to see what's their vision uh, what's their mission vision for the youth academy um what do they want uh you know out of the you know out of the kids and all because uh, seeing the performances and seeing the results and based on what kent is saying about the performances and all um hopefully we can get uh, you know, uh, another uh, Jarvi uh, Gayoso or another, you know, um, local player that, uh, you, you know, it's gonna, you're going to see him in the old footages, in the commercial, in the future. And then in the end, he's like a very fundamental Ascal player. So it's very fundamental that we, uh, we keep Loyola as one of the most important academies here in the whole Philippines. I know it kind of hurts you. To hear that Peter J, because you being a Kaya fan and on the whole the rivalry and like that, but you know, um, you have to give credit where it's due. You know, you have to give credit where it's due. <laughs> He's just refusing. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what I'm um looking to see like the perspective. No, I I mean I'm not against it. Uh, if for what it's worth, I want to uh, see Loyola back at it again, and they're doing it right this time. They're really doing it right. They're starting from the ground up. Uh, siguro, um, w- what's important here is to see someone making efforts to make sure that football is well and truly alive, not only in the senior level but also in the grassroots level. Lastly, from our friend here from the uh, six yard box, what can you say about this or what are you expecting? I'm uh, particularly curious because you know, the lack of uh, the senior team is. Uh, uh, it's a bit of a curious case for me. What really happens to uh, the graduates of the Loyola Academy? Do they get particular aid uh, when it comes to moving up to a, a top-flight club? Do they uh, form a, an alumni team, for example, to take on uh, smaller competitions? I, I really want to see if uh, there is an end result. Because you see, you can invest all you want on the grassroots. You can train them. You can groom them. Well, as uh, as the career path progresses, if there is no end game, if there is no feasibility, or well, the term is if they won't turn pro, it's really something that would um, prevent more kids from investing in this kind of future. Well, pag pag batang bata pa, they wouldn't see it because it's fun. There's teamwork. There's the good things that you learn from playing football. But as you go along your career path, it eventually gets to a point that uh, how much time should I be investing on this? And uh, Loyola, uh, since Loyola has a very steady academy and would have a very, a very good pool of players when a senior team comes up. But in the meantime, while the senior team is still uh, in the works, what happens to the students that have graduated or will be graduating very soon? So I'm really curious to hear how they ha- uh, provide them help, uh, see where they can put them, and you know, that kind of thing. 
Yan din ang gusto kong malaman actually uh, through this uh, podcast episode. So kung parehas tayo ng nararamdaman, sit back and relax. Give us a few minutes and once we come back, we'll bring you Coach Roxy Dorlas and Coach Noel Marcaida of Loyola FC Youth Academy dito lang sa hashtag Eat, Sleep, Breathe, Football. Welcome back to our show, mga pamangkikers. Uh, the moment that we have all been waiting for. We now have on our uh, podcast uh, two uh, uh, well-respected coaches here in the Philippines. Uh, we have Coach Roxy Dorlas, uh, the head coach of the Leola FC Youth Academy, and their technical director as well, Coach Noel Marcaida. Uh, so glad to have uh, both of you here in our podcast. It's, it's something that I'm very amazed to see that uh, two programs one is a goalkeeping program and another one uh, the youth academy of Loyola FC uh, joining together for the future of, uh, of Philippine football uh, coach uh, Roxy can you uh, siguro can you just give us some let's say introduction or uh, can you talk us through how uh, this um, let's say merger or this movement uh, started with Loyola FC academy and the uh, um, GK Marks uh, goalkeeping academy I've been uh, looking for someone who was able to uh, to handle the, the technical side of uh, Leola Academy, and um, so I heard from one of my coaches that Coach Leola was available. So uh, I just uh, went straight forward. I sent him a message, and uh, we started to meet up. And um, he actually opened up about GK Marks and uh, the possibilities that he could have together with Leola Academy. And uh, we came into good terms and how we can move forward. And uh, I think we both benefit from uh, from the GK Marks program. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. Now, um, I, I just want to, uh, you know, ask as well, Coach Noel. You know, um, being in the um, top flight uh, club football scene uh, before with uh, with Kaya. Now, moving over to the grassroots uh, development with uh, JK Marks as well as Loyola FC. Um, how different it is, or let's say how difficult it is right now to be, uh, let's say, the technical director of a grassroots development team. Well, it's it's. First of all, it's a two different world, you know, because um, I came from a, a world where in you're dealing professional players, okay, management, um, coaches as well. Okay, then after on a from from a short um, transition, bigla akong napunta sa grassroots. Okay, mm-hmm. so I took that opportunity na. Binigay ni Coach Roxy sa akin after my contract with Kaya FC men's team. Okay, so, and also, I took it as an opportunity as well na I can work on the JK Marks Academy because it's solely for goalkeeping. Um, it's really hard to put up an academy, especially if you don't have the facilities. You know, I think that's one challenge na may encounter mo if you wanted to put up an academy. So, uh, I spoke to Coach um, Roxy and offered GK Marks Academy goalkeeping who have to tie up with Loyola. So, at least GK Marks will have uh, a venue okay, to work on okay, aside from um, working on technical aspect of Loyola. It's a challenge. Okay, kasi kung mahaba yung pasensya mo doon sa professional level, dapat mas habaan mo pa yung tali mo pagdating sa mga bata. No? Though I started my coaching with with 7, 8 years old sa Green Hills way back 2004. So somewhat I had I, I had an idea on how to to handle kids as well. Okay? So I mean, I started February with with Loyola, then all of a sudden after a month and a half then here comes the corona and this pandemic. So I wasn't able to really maximize the, the planning and everything about about um, the, the academy. So we take advantage of the full key having. We're doing um, virtual meetings with Coach Rossi and other um, Loyola coaches. So para mapag-usapan namin kung paano kami, paano namin itutuloy yung program through 
Thank you so much, Coach. Now, um, it's really great as well to see that even though that we are in uh, you know this situation that we have the pandemic and all, na nahirapan tayo to reach out to our um, uh, younger players, especially this is something na very important for them. Uh, they are our future, at least uh, through your virtual trainings and vi- uh, your virtual meetings na naikita din namin through your uh, social media page. Eh, at least uh, we, we were given a hope that uh, the program will never stop and the program is just there. to uh, to continue now um coach Roxy um we we all know that Loyola FC has this very deep uh history in the Philippine uh, club football scene um how tough is it uh, for for you or for you and coach Noel to uh, build an academy from the ground up despite the fact that you know your club has its own history and uh, in, in terms of uh, top flight uh, club football oh, it was definitely it was really tough um Well, I, I took it both as an opportunity and a, and a challenge. Um, I think that most of the, the people are familiar with uh, um, with Leola Aguila, Leola Morocco Sparks, uh, FC Morocco Manila. Okay, so uh, there's a, a lot of weight on my shoulders when I took over. Um, what people don't know was that um, when I was appointed back in January 2018, Instead, I was uh, I was uh, managing the academy with maybe about 20 players, maybe less. Okay, um, so it was uh, 20 players less, and uh, from age five until maybe 17 years old. So we weren't even able to uh, to manage forming a team. So it was really a, a big challenge. It was really a big challenge, and uh, I, I think that I. Uh, I'm very fortunate that we had some uh, loyal parents who uh, believe in uh, in uh, my capabilities. Thank you so much, Coach. Uh, I'm really happy as well that you know, um, being a player of the club, uh, you know, siguro uh, parang. Medyo bihira to see someone uh, who played for the club and uh, also um, after, uh, let's say, after finishing their career of uh, being a player and then converts to um, the coach of the club. That, that's really amazing to see as well. Now, um, siguro for, for uh, the both of you, we, we can have Coach Roxy to answer first and we can have Coach Noel. Um, despite the um, the pandemic or what what we are experiencing right now, How happy are you in terms of the progress of your academy? Um, I'm very happy. Um, when I first took over, uh, I told myself that within uh, the next three years, uh, I wanted to have more age groups. So when I first started uh, the first YFL season, I uh, we had under sevens all the way to the U17. So we had six age groups. Um, and then... This year, supposedly this year, uh, we would have had nine age groups. So we had uh, an under seven, two under nines, an under 11, under 13, uh, two under 13s, uh, another 15, under 17. And we started our men's team for um, in, uh, in the seventh league. So uh, we, were in go- we were going into that direction already. Um, I was slowly trying to... get our on the 19 players into that competitive level to play at the senior level and then uh hopefully within the next five years uh within the next two years of uh, reaching that men's level already so uh, forming a senior team already so uh, as i told that uh, we, uh, we have all licensed coaches um, i'm very happy that um, with the coaches selection that we have right now So uh, we all we all have certified coaches. We've been having regular international competitions. So last year we entered uh, a tournament in Japan, which is called the Numazu Cup, and it was an unbelievable experience. And we're supposed to be going there again this year. Um, unfortunately, it didn't happen. Also, we sent an under 11 and under 13s team. Uh, the Bangkok Super Cup. Uh, our under 30s actually won uh, won the plate division, so we became champions in that, in that competition, which was a very good achievement as well. So, uh, I'm very happy with the direction that we're going into right now. Uh, at Grassroots, 
grassroots level we've been doing provincial tours. So uh, it's an initiative coming from the club that we are uh, coordinating, communicating with local clubs in the province uh, and with the LGU who uh, host a two-day festival. So um, it's to get more competitions, more games, more clubs who are not being able to travel all the way to Manila to look for competitive competitions. So uh, Loyola teams are the one traveling to, uh, to those provinces for us to have competitions um, at, at those provinces. Uh, so we went to uh, went to Laguna, we went to uh, Los Baños. It was our first province uh, that we went to. Then Pampanga and the last one was in Baguio. So uh, unfortunately this year, we're supposed to go to some Buanga as well. So we'll be talking to, uh, uh, to local clubs and to people in some Buanga for us to host there as well. So uh, very unfortunate that it didn't host food. Uh, that's really something that we are going to look forward to with the uh, the provincial tour of uh, Leol FC. Now, ikaw naman coach Noel, siguro, uh, what what can you say with the progress of uh, Leol FC pro, uh, program being that uh, you've been with the club since February? And siguro, uh, how happy are you with the integration of your own uh, goalkeeping academy as well? Well, I think um, coach Res, Roxy were able to mention already the the previous um yung adapting niya um fans academy and also he mentioned the plans also moving forward like i think he mentioned a lot of those already and um, i just want to share with regard to your question earlier when it comes to pandemic how are we able to manage the the, the process of loyola well at first we thought hindi siya tatagal ng ganito no we at first we thought it's only last it will only last for like a month or two months that's why it is really not on our plan to have a virtual session okay so what we did is the first four months our first four no, our first uh when when the lockdown when the quarantine is declared was declared we do um weekly assignments and challenges to our players Okay, and it lasted for six weeks, I think. Yeah, so that was that was the the, the, the plan during the quarantine. So since na tumagal na tumagal yung quarantine, next ten the next ten, then we decided to come up with a virtual session. Okay, and um, the attack on our version is we do three times a week session. Our attack on our um, three times, uh, we do two twice a week um, technical sessions, okay? And um, we do one schedule for a weekend. Then we attack the tactical part, the the, the psychological and um, the um, social, tissue social matters of 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 of, um, of the player. So. We are attacking on the five pillars of development, okay, which is um, we do we, we 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 do the technical, the physical aspect, the tactical aspect, the psychological aspect, and the social aspect of development of our players. So everything we 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 send it to our players, then we give challenges for them to do that, okay. And we ask them to ask their, um, the challenges, the proof of their challenges, also for us to monitor their, their, their development. Okay, so so far it, 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 it is successful and um, the players are very responsive. Um, this time, I think, because of the gadgets, pag yung mga bata kasi, pag yung cell phone, laptop yung nasa harapan nila, very attentive sila. So... That's one aspect, positive aspect na nakuha namin, nakita namin with this virtual session, that they are very attentive to virtual session. And so, yun yung factor. So, take advantage of that of that um, number one aspect na makukuha namin sa mga bata. And we make sure that we have really a good program. Uh, Coach Roxy has been very, very busy yeah, with, with, with weekly challenges, 
Okay, we also not only that, we also do assessment, okay, every month. Every after four weeks we do assessment for us to really have that data on the progress of our players. Okay, so yan yung ginagawa na namin ngayon sa Loyola program on how we do our how we run and continue our program with with this pandemic. And then it's really working, it's really, really really helping the program. And not only that, but it's also challenge for our coaches as well okay because um new norm okay usually not used to um in, always stay in the laptop to do the program but now they were forced to do that because that's a requirement that's a requirement now for not the, not just that the players they have a new trend in playing but i think for coaches as well this is the new th uh, trend for for coaching if you wanted to go further to coaching you really have to put yourself I mean, invest on the time, you invest on the laptop, computer, invest on the gadget, then you really have to put time to work on, on the programs with the use of the new technology. Sorry guys, all right. Um, okay, glaw ulit yung mic ko. All right, so yun nga, very insightful from Coach uh, Noel. Um, in in these trying times, at least, we were able to uh, get the message across to the players, um, have them, uh, their continuous training even at homes. And uh, yun nga, gaya nga na sabi ni Coach Noel, uh, yung mga bata is uh, mas tutok actually sa training sessions because uh, you're basically using gadgets and uh, as we all know uh, yun yung pangunahing nagagamit ng ating mga players or ng mga bata during this uh, uh, trying times now um, siguro before I head into the other questions that I have for the both of you gentlemen uh, let me have um, a, a time with our uh, avid fan out here uh, and uh, our panelists as well Kent uh, brother Kent um Go ahead. Uh, kung may katanungan ka with uh, Coach Roxy and Coach Noel, this is your uh, time to shine. <laughs> Tak tayo lang nakamute ka pa yata. Tanggalin ko nga sa pagkakamute. Hindi ako nagmute niya na. Nakamute lang yan kanina. <laughs> yan na. Uh, uh, wala. <laughs> yan na, yan na. Yan na. Go, go. Actually, ano, I have no questions. <laughs> ano rin ko na lahat eh. Um, yeah. They, okay. they explained it pretty well all the progress. So, ano, it's just like nice for them to really ano, to really share it with the football community. Especially they've been working under the radar this past two years in improving the quality of the the academy, um, training more players from all walks of life. Um, and yeah, you know, building building something from the ground up, uh, seeing it happen with your uh, your beloved club. It's just <laughs> ano, it's just a pleasure. Yeah. Kasi na para min actually pinagtato anan si David kasi coaches. Uh, um, we were basically discussing na uh, this episode. Siguro we can say that this is dedicated for him. <laughs> Dahil uh, matagal niya nang sinusundan yung club and uh, I, I think the club is reaping its uh, you know uh, fruits of labor. Ika nga. Um, ito, ito si, si Sir Glenn of the Six Yard Box and Sports, uh, uh, Burgers and Sports. He has a very interesting question when we were on a break earlier. Uh, go ahead, Glenn. Uh, throw in your question. Uh, thank you also, coaches, for gracing us and giving us the opportunity to uh, ask you these questions. So... Uh, Akin is very simple lang naman. Um, you see, from the grassroots up, you uh, the academy invests uh, a lot of time, a lot of money, effort, patience into these youngsters, and uh, you groom them into becoming uh, top class footballers, and perhaps maybe in the future uh, a future Azcal or another star. But what I'm really curious about is uh, during these trying times wherein there is still no senior team in existence or perhaps there is but it's not participating in top flight uh, are we um, is the academy providing assistance to uh, graduates to um, uh, 
uh, to those who would be stepping up from youth cl- uh, from youth teams to uh, becoming potentially a professional? Does the uh, academy provide assistance to them in getting in touch with the team, or are you pulling them for a potential comeback? How does it work? Because you see, one of the things that I'm really curious about is um, where. Uh, how the progression would be when it comes to where they're heading. So that's what I want to hear. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll get to that in a um, I think uh, for us, uh, for the longest time, we've only managed until uh, the other 7K age group. And uh, if there are any potential players uh, that we can recommend, we do go out. Uh, out of a comfort zone to communicate with um, with schools, with the coaches, um, trying to get them uh, at least a trial or uh, a trial for them uh, to experience, to see at what level they are at, and uh, uh, that's something that we can help them with. Uh, but again, uh, of course, this is um, if the potential of the player is there. We cannot be uh, we cannot be giving everyone that opportunity. So we, we do help those potential players who uh, who want to go to college and do not know how. So we do communicate with coaches who are at college level um, and with um, so to at least give them a, a try out there. All right. I think uh, um, I think I have nothing more. I think uh, in, in addition, sorry, in addition to Coach ahead, Roxy, Coach. Um, well, to to really answer your question, um, I think when it comes to giving assistance or if it's monetary, I mean, if it's monetary, then I think the fund the fund of the academy has to be deep. That's one. Yeah. And um, since we're talking about uh, our 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 Leola, then. You mentioned earlier that Loyola Academy is on a rebuilding process, okay? And I think we already, Coach Roxy, Coach Roxy were able to establish um, the academy and um, Buhay in Shaolet. Okay, as he mentioned earlier, it starts with 20 students and some of the players are um, mga anak no mga military, nasa Navy. Okay, so I think doon siya nagumpisa. Then when... Nagkaroon ng instances na hindi na sila nakapag-train doon sa TV. Then went out to Pasig, I think. Went to Pasig. Okay, then now, eto ngayon yung taon na to. Before this pandemic, just to share you guys, before this pandemic, um, Loyola Academy has a plan of tying up it to LGU. Okay, so I think kung... Actually, we're planning that to happen this summer. But since na, na declare nga yung pandemic by March, so na, na stop siya and hindi nag continue. So sayang, no? Kasi going back to your answer, Glenn, uh, to your question, Glenn, when it comes to assistance, I think if we have the assistance from LGU, okay, I think we can we can a- we will be able to give assistance to those uh, players, graduating players. Okay, as of the mem- as of the moment, ang naibibigay namin with those players graduating from the U17. Um, we started to put up a team doon sa sevens to give them exposure. Yeah, and um, it's not solely we're saying we put up a men's team on the sevens. But you can observe the roster of that team. It's not purely men's, it's not purely senior team. We have players there that are member of the U17s. We have players there that are 15 years old playing in the sevens. Joining with their kuyas, and some of them are their titles already. Okay, so giving this opportunity for them to play with their kuyas and titos, I mean, I think that can give them uh, some sort of a moral booster for them to continue playing for the love for for the sport that they love. Okay, I, I think this is one. And um, having said, with tying up to LGU. Um, we already have players. I think Coach Rossi already established um, some sort of community in Pasig wherein um, most of the Loyola players are also um, residents of Pasig. Okay? And most of them are players playing for U15s 
and U17. Okay, so I think that the, 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 our progress is still, I mean, that's, that's one part of the plan that we are natinatahak namin going to the progress of, of, of the academy. Okay, so hopefully um, that plan will still push through after this pandemic, so at least we can really move forward to our, our, our two, three years plan with, 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 with um, uh, Loyola. Because as my coach Roxy mentioning, um, there's a two, three years plan already okay, when it comes to progress of the players. But I think we need um, uh, support from, uh, from an LGU to, to do this uh, program. Yeah? And um, not only that, we also have plans on hosting an international tournament, supposedly this year. But because of the pandemic, then... Um, nagkaroon na naman ng nagkaroon na naman ng, um, ng, ng, ng somewhat um, hold on doon sa plano. So, that is one area wherein we will we will have a discussion again. Um, again, um, go to plan, uh, go to the drawing board again and plan again what if payaga na and what if hindi. So, we have to come up with a certain plan on, 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 on running, running those uh, future program of, of Loyola. You know, Coach Roxy, Coach Roxy, malaming plano to eh. Kaya tahimik lang siya. Kaya tahimik lang. So, moving forward, hopefully, magbalik tayo sa normal so we can really work on on the things na on the plans na financial out na ni Coach Rocky. Grabe. Um, yung reaction ng buong uh, Eat Sleep Breed Football Gang, I mean, coming from someone who supports, uh, sabihin na natin rival club of Loyola, I- I'm I'm really getting excited with the fact that, you know, uh, 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 an academy like Loyola FC has this plan laid out if not for the covid-19 pandemic eh siguro uh, they they've been experiencing yung uh, yung hard earned um, results ng kanilang labor and also um succeed din ako dun sa um, kanilang ginagawa in terms of their uh, let's say men's team sa Sevens Football League I was there uh, every week I was there every Sunday nakikita ko yung team ni coach Roxy and uh, ni coach Noel uh, I've been seeing uh, yun nga yung U15 uh, actually I saw kundi ako nagkakamali was like a U17 goalkeeper who went up against a very tough team in the Sevens before uh, before uh, all football events or activities were um, halted eh, they went through a um, very tough game but i think they've won it uh, they've won that game so um sobrang ganda and uh, i mean if if i were loyola fan siguro just like Kent, i'll be um uh, grinning to the top of my ears, but but then again, it's it's all for Philippine football, and I'm really happy to hear these uh, messages. We, we still have uh, probably a couple more questions, and we have a few more questions coming in from our viewers. So uh, right now, we're just gonna take a short break, and pagbalik namin eh, may excite pa tayo lalo sa movement ng Loyola FC Youth Academy. Dito lang yan sa hashtag Eat Sleep Breed Football.
Thank you so much again for watching. Uh, this is Tito J of Hang, Tito Mong Football Vlogger with another episode of Hashtag Eat Sleep Breathe Football. Kasama ulit natin si Coach Noel Marcaida, Technical Director of uh, Leola U- uh, FC Youth Academy and uh, their head coach as well, Coach uh, Roxy Dorla. So um, before we head in, siguro dun sa questions na meron yung uh, ating uh, fans, uh, I think David uh, wants to ask a couple of questions. Go ahead, sir. Uh, so, uh, two questions because um, I heard something interesting also from Coach um, Noel. With uh, to Coach Noel, with regards to, because you said uh, um, among the five pillars, right, there is the social and the psychological one. Um, obviously, the pandemic has caused a lot of psychological problems, maybe for the kids and also for the teenagers, because it's the first time in you know history that this kind of event has happened. You know, not just only in the Philippines but around the world. You as coaches, how can you help um, you know your fellow players? In I know they have their parents, but sometimes they miss football, and sometimes you know they might view you as like your you know a second uncle, second father, you know a, a sort of figure in in football. So how can you you know try to cheer them up or try to say hey you know guys sooner or later we're gonna play again and also how can you guys like deal with the psychological part for for the young players of the youth academy? Well, first, first is we make sure that the program and the training sessions that we're doing is is um, fun. Okay, we make sure that um, every training we make sure that they're enjoying it. And after the session, after the virtual session, we make sure that they have that feeling of going back and missing the session again. Okay, and um, before we end the sessions, we always have that um, brief discussion, okay, with regards to the sessions, with regard to the session that we run, uh, what do they learn from it, then not only that, we are also giving them um, homework, what to do, what to do sa bahay para maging busy sila, okay? Um, and the most important na ako sinasabi ko is they have to take this opportunity to, to stay fit. Okay? If they're really willing to improve, then they have to make sure that they stay fit. Okay? Kasi once na maging normal na and maalaw na yung training sa pitch, then if they still have that fitness, if they maintain that fitness, then it's going to be easier for them to train the pitch. Okay? Because it, 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 it's different and it's difficult once they hindi sila not fit, then going back to training, back to zero. So it's really hard. It's really hard. So we as coaches, our role and responsibility now with this pandemic is to make sure that our players continue their progress okay, through fun, an enjoyable session, and at the same time, making sure that not only physically, but we also make sure that mentally they're, still, they're also ready. That's why um, Coach, Roxy did, Coach Roxy did this um, weekend session, a lecture, okay, making sure that they still learn the game through match analysis okay, by watching video and the Q&A discussion and every lecture for them to learn and for also for us to put, for us coaches also to hear um, insights from our, our uh, players. Okay, and it's really, it's really enjoyable, it's really fun and it's really interesting to hear um, uh, player views, player insights when you show them a video. Even, let's say, even an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, you know, sharing his insights. I mean, it's really great. Okay, with the guidance of the coaches. So I think it goes down to how do we motivate them with this pandemic? We make sure that they enjoy with our online session. We make sure that they learn from it, okay? not only physically, but also mentally through much analysis okay? and giving them homework. One example of, like, say, attacking on their social capabilities. If they're an occasion, we ask them what to do. We ask them what can they do with that occasion. Let's say Father's Day. Okay, we go back to that Father's Day and we ask 
Sam, what have you, what, what, ano ginawa mo doon sa Father's Day? Okay, so with that, I mean, they were, ma- makakapag-isip na sila. Ibigay mo yung assignment na may isip nila. Ano yung pwede nilang gawin para sa dad nila? No? And at the same time, we're not just attacking the individual, the player itself. We're also attacking the family. Okay, kasi asking them or giving them homework, okay, there are moments that they will ask their parents how to do that homework. Okay, so some way, when you're not just hitting the player itself, you're also giving um, a, a responsibility for the player and the parents to really bond, okay, and do things for them to really work together. So, yun yung, yun yung attack. Yun yung attack namin. Uh, yeah, thank, thanks very much. And um, follow-up question for uh, Coach uh, Roxy. So, hopefully, um, maybe in the next few years, if all the projects go well and, you know, with the increase of LGUs, increase of, you know, um, basically Loyola having another senior team, let's say all of these years go well. Uh, is there, like, um, more or less, uh, do you have any plans of making, like, uh, you know, Loyola sort of, like, in the Eredivisie type of mentality that, uh, you help with the kids, not just with only, you know, with football, but let's say coming out from school, they train at the same time, you know, providing them with educational assistance uh, with, um, you know, uh, so that they can focus on both on maybe uh, on football at the same time on their education. Is there a sort of uh, plan? Um, do you guys uh, try to make it as a sort of blueprint for, you know, for the educational system uh, towards your players? Uh, well, to be honest, uh, not within my plans uh, to be straightforward, but uh, maybe I can share with you as well. When uh, when I was uh, still, I, when I was born and raised in the Netherlands, um, at maybe eight, nine years old, um, I was already uh, scouted to play for a, a professional professional club other than Hat. And uh, that's actually how they operate. So um, you'll be offered to... Uh, uh, play for their academy and then at the same time um, they will offer they'll you have a specific school that you have to go to um, you have an adjusted schedule so uh, based on uh, on the training sessions that you have so if you have uh, training sessions in in the afternoon okay your, your schedule will be adjusted based on um, on your and your training schedule, so uh, it, it it would be it would be something to look forward to here in the Philippines. I'm not sure if anyone is doing it right now, um, but um, that that would be that would be the direction that the Philippine football should be going to. Uh, if it was uh, if it was my opinion, uh, I think we should always link education to, uh, to sports uh, and. Uh, I think hopefully in the near future that's something that we can consider doing. Um, I don't, I don't think we are ready for it yet, but um, uh, I think that should be in our plans. Yes, definitely. Okay, thank you very much, and also thank you for you know trying. Uh, it's a pity that you guys weren't able to go to Zamboanga. You know, it's nice that you guys uh, expand also to Mindanao. Me talking as a Mindanaoan, I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. That's it for my questions. All right. Thank you so much, David. Napagandang tanong and uh, mas maganda rin yung sagot actually. Now, um, we head into the question siguro from uh, our viewers, uh, especially coming from uh, Coach Maor Rosen. Uh, so, first, uh, this is a question for um, for Coach Roxy. Um, Coach Moore said that one of the best left foot I have ever seen in the Philippines and I wanted to have in my teams there. Um, his question was, what degree of maturity in training must a coach have in order to lead a national team in any category or, let's say in your case, um, uh, an academy? Could you repeat the question? Sure. Um, he asked, uh, what, sorry, what degree of maturity in training must a coach have in order to lead a national team in any category or let's say an academy team okay um thank you coach war for that question 
Okay, uh, so um, maybe at, at the national team level, because um, yes, I, I've been coaching at national team level for uh, almost three years right now. I think uh, to answer that question, I think it's very important to, uh, to be able to manage your session. So to be planning ahead of time. Um, so going into going into your, your training session, you should be prepared, okay? Uh, not just yourself, even your coaching staff, they should be uh, they should be going on the field, knowing what to do, uh, which, um, uh, which players they have to, uh, have to further improve. At the same time, I think that, uh, uh, should always to prepare the place even before going to the training sessions to have a short briefing on what they have to expect already on uh, on what the training session is going to be about so uh, i think that's very important for the days as well um, the play the coach itself um they should be adaptable okay uh, the reason why they have to be adaptable is because i think that of coaches working with different kind of players. Uh, some of the players are the same, and uh, some some players they are very coachable, and some players have uh, an unbelievable talent, but uh, difficult to be working with. And it's, it's important for the coach to get the best out of them. So uh, we sometimes have to put ourselves out of that comfort zone and really try to uh, try to talk to them personally, sit down with them. Uh, and um, and sometimes we uh, try to work with those players on trying to get the best out of them. So um, I think being adaptable is important uh, for, for a coach. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Coach Moore. I hope you uh, were able to hear the answer of Coach Roxy regarding your question. Siguro follow up ko na lang dun, uh, Coach Roxy. Um, was it difficult to find like quality coaches for your academy and if so uh, can you like uh, enlighten us with the selection process that you do have for the coaches that you will be having in your in your academy well um, I like working with coaches I'm familiar with I like working with coaches I can trust um, at the same time it's a level of competition that they have played already I think that's very important um, as well. I don't think that um, a coach, uh, a coach does not being able cannot translate um, some of the things to a player if he hasn't played at a certain level. So I think it's very important also for a coach to uh, to play at a high level, at least college level or uh, professional club level. Uh, national team level, I think it's very important. Um, also, I think coaches should be willing to learn. Uh, they should be passionate. Um, if you're passionate, you're, you're, you're automatically hardworking as well. Uh, at the same time, young coaches are always open for uh, discovery. So they want to keep learning. They want to educate themselves. Uh, doing the coaching courses is very important. So, uh, just to answer your question, so coaches should be passionate. Uh, uh, coaches should be trustworthy, uh, reliable, independent, are very important, and, and then played at a certain level uh, of competition already. Uh, coaches selection, I think. Um, Maybe correct me if I'm coach wrong, coach the well, but uh, we uh, we look at their uh, play and coaching experience. So we look at their uh, CV. Then uh, we have an interview. Uh, we consider also that, uh, of course, which available age group they have to be coaching. Uh, they'll get a trial session, and then that's the time they even have a decision. If I'm right, <laughs> yes, I think um, 
those are factors okay in 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 trying to look for coaches yeah one is as very important as what coach she, coach Roxy said um that coach must have an experience playing on a competitive level okay not national team maybe um a, a collegiate uh, competition UAP and CAA okay because I think our coaches there on on, on, on 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 those colleges are licensed coaches okay and um, learning from them is is very important okay but that not necessarily mean that if you're a good player you can be a good coach yeah because if you're a good player Okay, and if you're not open-minded to coaching, then you will never learn. Okay, so I think for me, looking for coaches, it's easy to look for coaches. Yeah, but it's hard to look for coaches who's committed and open-minded. Okay, I think that's very important for me. Yeah, because I think if they're committed, then they make sure that they'll, they'll put time on everything. Okay, when it comes to coaching, that's first. Then second is, if they're open-minded, that means they're eager to learn. And they will never stop learning. Okay? And um, again, um, for, for Loyola program, part of our program is not just to get coaches, not just getting players and make, make that development. Part of our program is also to teach the coaches. Okay, so we're not we're not just keep, we're not just developing um, players in, 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 in Loyola. We're also trying to help coaches development. All right, I think that actually uh, answers uh, that follow up question that I have. Siguro um, I I just want to tackle more on the pressing uh let's say pressing issues that we currently have in terms of the grassroots development team. As we all know, there have been articles that were being posted out there. There are like opinionated articles uh, being put out by several writers regarding the grassroots program here in the Philippines. Uh, there are suggestions as well to do um let's say a draft type of um of uh, selection for the players for uh, clubs and national teams um siguro what we would like to know here first is that uh either coach noel or coach roxy can answer um siguro what we would like to know is where do you think does the uh, federation needs to step in in terms of uh, let's say assistance or what what do they need to improve what in terms of assisting academies or youth teams here in the country okay um i'll, I'll answer that okay if we talk about grassroots um i think we have to um consider the category okay mm-hmm. when we say grassroots it's 12 and under okay when you say grassroots it's 12 and under okay so 13 above it's already considered as youth okay um when it comes to pff giving assistance to grassroots development 100 percent Okay, PFF are, are giving assistance to grassroots development. Okay, AFC recognized PFF to have a good grassroots development, not only once, but twice. Okay, so that means if AFC could recognize the grassroots development of the Philippines, then that means that our grassroots program is good. Okay, there are progress of the grassroots in, in grass. Now, my thing is, if we have good grassroots development, why is it that when we go for U15, U17, U19 competition, okay, we get hammered internationally? Okay? So the problem there is not the grassroots. The problem there is the youth development. Mm-hmm. Yeah? So if we say about youth development, what do we need for our youth player to develop. 
Uh, I think this is where the PFF should, for me, this is where the PFF should give assistance to the academy. Okay, it's not monetary, but in a sense of how will the PFF expose these players in a competition. Okay, so my point is, aside from grassroots development, when they reach 13 to 19, there's lack of competition. Okay? That's one area where in there's a big gap if you compare of 12 years old going to 19 years old when it comes to international competition. Okay? They are nakalamang yung ibang bansa because they have continuous competition from to the youth has that already. Okay? They have U15 competition. Supposedly, they'll have a U15 nationals. They have a U17, I think. Mm -hmm. But the pandemic, then the whole thing shut. And they will be, and it will be pushed through next year. Alright? So, union point call. So, I think PFF assistance to academies through exposure, uh, through competition. Okay? With competitions, then these youth players will be exposed to different level of competition. Okay, the more games, the better. If players played more games, then there are better development. Okay, but if you only keep on training, then you don't play, then that's a big problem because you will not be tested if you don't play. Okay, there it's a different test if you just it's a different it's a different test on trainings on the compared to uh, application in game. Okay, so yun lang yun lang yung akin. I mean the PFF I think are doing their job when it comes to grassroots. Okay, but the question now is the continuity. Okay, youth program. Okay, so I think number one there is competition. Okay, but I salute to PFF as well as they are doing this U15 and U17 nationals. Okay, dun nga, na hold sa ng pandemic, then there are certain um, rules that we have to follow from the government. Then they'll, I think, nag sinabi na nila that they will, that, that, that U17, U15 competition will be moved to next year na. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think, I mean, we can see. That there, 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 there's, um, there's plan, okay. Uh, there's movement when it comes to youth development, okay. Yep. Uh, oh, so, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Coach. And, and I believe, uh, Coach Roxy, you've experienced this as well. Um, you've handled uh, one of our youth national teams, if I'm not mistaken, on one uh, tournament in Indonesia where uh, you were, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was in Indonesia. But you were pitted against the hosts of uh, the said tournament. And uh, the, the level of maturity, I can say, was kind of different or the level of experience was very different because in that tournament, of course, as you expect with Indonesia, they they love their football out there, and even in the uh, the youth level, they they can pack the stadiums and uh, yeah. So, uh, um, Siguro, what are your thoughts regarding regarding this? Siguro, where in the or, or where the federation lacks in terms of their support with the youth uh, youth development teams? Yeah, uh, thank you. I, I think that you're talking about uh, the most recent AFC. Yeah, yeah. when we uh, when we did in Indonesia. Mm. Okay, um, yes, definitely big big uh, uh, difference when it comes to the, the playing environment. I think we were playing um, an evening game and we were playing uh, and there were about maybe five to ten thousand people watching and we're talking about an under fifteen level uh, competition. Mm. So uh, a big, big difference when it comes to support. Uh, no, I agree with Coach Noel. I think uh, playing more games is definitely very important. Uh, not just competitive games. I think that, uh, that we can also um, have not competitive play games without any rules. I think that's very important as well. I think that uh, kids need to be playing outside. 
manipulative, um, and then try to identify what kind of player they are. Um, I think that that helps as well. I think that helps as well. But uh, maybe providing uh, international teams that can go to the Philippines uh, or sending uh, the stronger teams to a, a strong international competition outside of the Philippines. I think that definitely will benefit the players to get that experience. So uh, yes, again, competition is important. All right, thank you. And uh, yeah, I mean, exposure is uh, the main thing that these uh, youth uh, players need. Siguro, um, final uh, question to the both of you. Um, what does your academy or what do you aspire to bring to uh, Philippine football for years to come? Uh, uh, I'll start. I- for me, honestly, Jamer, I just want Philippines to be recognized as one of the bigger uh, football countries in Asia. Um, so that, that's really my, my dream. I, I see that the Filipino, uh, the Filipinos have that potential. Uh, we're, we're talking of, about players like Chippy Calico, um, talking about players like uh, Nano, who played for Kaya, uh, coming from FAU. But they're not the biggest players, but they're quick, they're agile, they're skillful, they have good decision making. So uh, we have very talented players. And um, I think if we uh, continue to move forward in that direction, to really uh, uh, work with the grassroots, work with the youth level, uh, I, I think that we can compete. Um, among the bigger countries in uh, in Asia, and I think that should be the direction of Philippine football. So um, I'll, I'll continue to work with the grassroots level. Uh, I want to continue working with the youth level, uh, just to make sure that the um, Philippines will be recognized as uh, one of those contenders in uh, in uh, in Asia. Thank you, Coach uh, Roxy. Go naman, Coach Noel. Um, anything that you'd like to add to what Coach Roxy said? Well, you know, I agree doon sa sinabi ni Coach Roxy, no? Um, dapat yung football natin sa Pilipinas, makilala siya, okay? Southeast Asia. Sa Southeast Asia. Pero first, if we have to go back, I think we have to identify muna the DNA of of a football player, of a Filipino football player. Okay? Kailangan muna nating alamin ano yung DNA ng isang football player natin. Okay? Kasi I think if we have that DNA, then we can work from there. Alam natin kung ano yung tatrabahuin natin player from the grassroots to youth going to the, the, the national team player. Okay? That's one. It's very important. Okay? It's very important. Kasi if we don't have that DNA, then our development is not synchronized. Okay? Magkakaroon tayo ng kanya-kanyang development. So it's very important for us to, to, to identify that DNA. What type of players, of a Filipino player, na gusto natin. Okay? Uh, next is, anong style, anong style ng, 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 ng national team? Ano ang style ng laro ng national team natin? Okay, kasi isang bagay din yun that we can develop our youth players through the style of our national team. Yeah? Kasi kung let's say meron kang magaling na defense na di-develop pero hindi siya akma doon sa national team so there's no youth. Diba? Hindi natin I mean we're not we're, hindi natin na-align yung path na gusto natin going to top. Okay? I guess if meron tayo ng ganitong setup then yung aim natin to be recognized and to be known as the football the foot uh, uh, a great football country in South Asia then madali siyang mga madali siyang madali siyang makuha kung ma-identify natin yan okay um yun yung akin for of course sino ba yung ayaw di ba i think ako gusto ko rin di ba gusto i mean that's one of the aim why we develop players for our players to play in an international level, okay? On my 
start doing JK Mark's program solely for goalkeepers. This is not just to develop goalkeeper to play for a national for a, for a, for, a, for, a, for a collegiate level. Okay, I'm trying to develop a goalkeeper that can be the next Patrick Dato. Okay, local. Okay, local player. Okay, a, a real homegrown that playing abroad. Okay, so that's the main, that's the next target of JK Mark's Academy. Okay, develop a goalkeeper that can play in international level and can play abroad. Okay. All right. I think that settles uh, what we really want to hear from these two coaches that we do have in our podcast today. One last thing. Anyone else you'd like to greet, invite, or whatever? Just go ahead, Coach. Uh, let, let's start off with you, Coach Noel. You'd like to uh, give your uh, shout outs or let's say yung yung uh, pangangamusta. <laughs> Um, well, first, um, thank you very much, Jamer, Glenn, David, and Ken, for this opportunity okay, to share. Kung ano yung ginagawa namin with this pandemic, how do we, what's what's our progress to share that with, that with you? Um, hopefully, uh, matapos na yung pandemic, no, and maging balik na tayo sa normal, so we can really work more on the sport that we love. Okay, and. Um, well, I'm promoting JK Marks and Loyola. <laughs> yeah. So yep. if you're if if there are parents watching this, if you are interested for your kids to do um, football activity at home, um, contact Loyola Marilka Academy. If there are goalkeepers that also want to join, learn from JK Marks also. Um, don't hesitate to contact us. Okay. Um, follow my GK Marks TV if if you guys want to know um, goalkeeping. If you guys want to have a goalkeeping workout, goalkeeping challenges, okay, video of goalkeeping will be posted there. Shout out to my family, <laughs> uh, well, my wife, um, Skylar, and Zoe. Okay, um, that's it. Thank you very much. A privilege to to be here with your show, on your show. Thank you so much, Coach Noveli. Go naman po, Coach Roxy. Okay, uh, thank you, Jamer, Kent, Glenn, David, uh, for having us. Um, it's uh, something I was looking forward to. Thank you so much, Kent, for your support. Okay, um, yes, again, I would like to invite everyone, um, all the all the players, to uh, try this experience to uh, to do the virtual sessions with Leo. Let's see. Um, so, for, for all those watching um, and interested to join uh, uh, virtual sessions with the LFC, okay, uh, please go visit the Facebook page of the LFC Academy. Um, I would also like to take this opportunity to uh, to thank uh, our sponsors, Rat Chameleon and uh, Daniel Juice and Hot Dog, for your continuous support. And um, the LGUs who have been supporting us and uh, the, the local clubs for our provincial tours, thank you so much um, for your continued support. And uh, of course, I, uh, my mom watching, uh, <laughs> my girlfriend and the kids, thank you so much for, for supporting us all. All right, thank you so much, Coach Roxy and Coach Noel. Uh, there you have it, guys. Uh, a very fruitful uh, program of the uh, uh, Loyola FC uh, Youth Academy, and we hope that we could get um, other um, uh, programs here as well. Uh, we hope we can get other uh, youth academies here as well in our program. Um, we just have a couple more things to say. Um, we, uh, our uh, guests have already left us again. Uh, uh, thank you so much for joining our podcast. Siguro, uh, we want to wrap this up uh, with, um, you know, uh, with something that we would like to say about how uh, Loyola FC has been doing their youth program. Uh, I'm really happy that, you know, uh, even though during this pandemic, um, eh, nagagawan pa rin nila ng paraan to be with um, 
uh, to be with uh, to be with uh, their players even virtually nagagawa nila ng paraan yan and uh, I, I give my uh, big kudos to them it's really amazing to see uh, how they've been doing uh, stuff just to make sure that these players are still um, you know in tip top condition and make sure na hindi sila uh, nahihirapan and all um Papabalikin ko lang yung mga kasama ko. Uh, ayun. So, again, uh, I'm really happy that we were able to have them. Uh, siguro hintayin ko lang yung tatlo na bumalik. Sorry. Hindi na. Alright, so ito lang, pabalikin lang namin yung uh, grupo uh, just for you guys uh, to uh, talk to us. Um, ayan, so uh, unti-unti na silang bumabalik. Um, Kent, pakisabi kay Coach Roxy, sorry na naputol tayo. In due time, hindi na natin may experience to once we have, you know, wink wink kung ano man yung inaayos ni Tito. But, Kent, squeeze mo na yung brief mo kasi grabe ka basa. <laughs> Um, actually, kanina pa namin pinag-uusapan to that Kent, Kent is really happy. Um, he is really happy. The fan in you is like, fuck y'all. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> uy, guys, nakalive tayo, ah. <laughs> nakalive tayo, ah. Pero ano, pero, um, uh, yun lang. I, I mean, yes, the Kaya fan inside of me is like, Envious because uh, I, I've been hearing these uh, plans from uh, Loyola. However, you don't have to worry. Um, probably on our next podcast, we'll have um, uh, Kai FC Academy Director, uh, ah, wala na. Coach broke Chris. Your diapers, <laughs> probably. I'm, I'm just planning, but uh, I, I, I just got inspired because I, I want to see how the other teams are doing it. If Loyola is doing it, uh, right now, like this, uh, a rebuilding club, a rebuilding academy. What more? Yung um, yung well-established academy na like Kaya FC Academy. So I hope we could get them on the podcast next time. But nevertheless, it's it's been a fun, interactive episode once again. And thank you so much, Ken, for making this possible for us. Uh, if not for your uh, wet. Uh, uh, pants and all we wouldn't be having uh, Coach Roxy in our podcast and thank you so much as well to Coach Noel Coach Roxy sorry we weren't able to uh, bid our goodbyes um, mukhang nire-restrict tayo ni, uh, ni, um, ni Zoom for that but yun nga um, siguro before we wrap things up uh, for this podcast for today um, unahin natin si Kent how hopeful are you for this not only for Loyola not only for Loyola but the entire country's grassroots and youth development program over the next should we say 5 to 10 years how hopeful are you in in, in the programs that we do have here in the country um for me i have very i have i have very high hopes for it um from 2010 to 20 from to now um May, di ko alam masasabi na ano eh, na naging talagang ideal yung development curve like what we all have envisioned pero there's been progress and we can't deny that and those 10 years it has been really still a lot of um, challenges a lot of losses but no a lot of mistakes but you learn from losses you learn from defeats and um important thing is um you all learn from them and know how to correct those mistakes and bounce back. Um, it's good to know na, ano, na we're getting there one step at a time. And um, hopefully the National Youth Grassroots Program will really take flight into the next five years with all these tournaments na, na, i, na, i, na <laughs> i, an PFF. Yun. That nang tournaments that they will organize because that's what's needed, not only assistance but exposure to the youth players. Um, for Loyola, um, I don't admit <laughs> I got wet. <well. laughs> <laughs> Who would it be? I mean, it, it's it's the club that you support 
yeah. sabi ko nga And, ano, since time immemorial so um sobrang ano sobrang I, I know that you're so wet right now and you can't wait to go to the bathroom And ano um <laughs> de uh, siguro ano nung to ba to be honest in my opinion parang nung una ano eh when the club was established I had certain reservations about how will they do this or that but seeing the progress um Uh, 2018, 2019, until now, parang ano eh, nakakagulat. Like, you're seeing a good thing come together. It's like, um, yeah, it's like planting a tree. Seeing the tree grow. Mm. Ganun. Mm-hmm. So, yun, um, I just hope na, ano, na, yun nga, ano, the day will come na, yun, makita ulit natin sa top flight, um, aside from having a very, uh, re- Uh, thriving academy and I hope all uh, other clubs will follow suit on how Loyola develop the, mo- the model yun lang ano okay. kasi yeah ano kasi uh, it's not easy but coach Roxy and uh, napansin ko lang dun sa kanila sa mga coaches in the academy they never stop learning they hindi sila na, they're not um, hindi sila nakukulong sa concept na pwede na yan true uh, it's, it's academy um, ito lang dapat gawin natin they really look for ways to go beyond over and beyond what an academy should do in basically do mm. and that's the ano, that's the thing uh, with academy uh, with the youth the football system dito hindi pwedeng pwede na we should continue innovating improving every step of the way and uh, eventually pag ganyan yung model we'll see more stronger football institutions here And that's what we want. Actually, ano nga, uh, just to give a quick shout out to one of the coaches of Loyola FC Youth Academy na nakikita ko rin sa Facebook. He's been uh, very, uh, you know, invested in this program and I'm seeing it a lot on his social media account. Uh, Coach Aaron Flores, um, uh, just yes. a quick shout out. Alam mo yung, uh, just seeing this one coach of Loyola uh, who continuously learn on uh, what Uh, he needs to uh, to teach to the kids kung ano yung kailangan pa niyang aralin as as a coach um i i mean if you're not happy with with this uh kind of coach i don't know what else will make you happy with this kind of program so um we really appreciate the efforts of the, your coaches out there in Loyola FC um ikaw, ikaw david uh what can you say about this uh this episode that we have i know that we had a couple of episodes that's really um exciting it's really amazing to hear but this time it's it's kind of refreshing Uh, for us to hear na it's from the grassroots so your thoughts on it uh first of all um Kent made a lot of you know um really really good points uh I, I totally understand um the only thing I just want that also Loyola teaches and not just only Loyola maybe hopefully other youth academies is that you know football is for everyone I know there's a fee but that fee is uh, going to something bigger it it will serve as something that will assist not just only the academy but also you know the the players and hopefully you know sooner or later parents will realize that it's also an investment towards their kids it's also an investment because uh you know uh not let's say you know yeah of course school is also important but You know, also football is very important when it comes to discipline, when it comes to creating social, you know, um, how do you say this? Uh, being social towards others to understand empathy, to understand that it's not about you. It's also about the other. So uh, hopefully that uh, they will realize that, you know, um, that it's for everyone. Football's for everyone. It's not for the elite. And that football's also, you know, um, there is a fee, but it's towards... Uh, basically, you know, like towards life, you know, towards life lessons. And so it's, you know, it's really also for the, at the same time, for the love of the game. And, you know, seeing, uh, I'm also, you know, I, I, like when I'm actually jealous of Loyola because at the end of the day, like, even though they don't have a senior team, they have a youth team. As while here in Dava, we have nothing. So... <laughs> Uh, it's really sad. It's really sad, but I like it that they're going, you know, um, even outside Metro Manila, you know, because we need to also help also the other uh, kids that 
are outside of Luzon and basically that's it. So I'm really happy for this. It's uh, also an eye-opening thing for me with regards to our youth academy, knowing that they're really doing well. And um, I see, uh, you know, sometimes. Sorry, I'm. I'm it. Sorry, uh, because. Ajit ka ba? It, ano eh, it, no, it's like parang ano lang eh, it's, it, it, I'm having tears of joy because na parang you know there's actually a future for football. There's actually a future for football, knowing that there are people like Coach. Those, uh, how do you say? Oh my God, I can't even remember the name. Coach Joel and Coach Roxy in, in, in how do you say this? In, you know, at the hands. If, what if we have a hundreds of Coach Roxy's and Coach Noel's around the Philippines? Diba? And then the thing that gave me goosebumps is that we are, according to them, we are already giants in Southeast Asia. Yes, sir. Amen. So when they said that, na parang, <sighs> you know, like, Goosebumps and all, man. And it, it, like tears just came out in front, like just hearing those things. So it was a very emotional and very educational uh, episode. So, yeah. If we have wet pants of Kent Garcia, we have teary eyed Johnny Pampa. I mean, uh, I, I understand because being, you know, uh, hindi ko man tinuloy, but being a grassroots uh, coach myself with, with, uh, with Santo Cristo FC before. I, I mean, I understand the, the struggles that we do have to endure with, um, you know, uh, yung, yung tipong whenever you're training inside the court, uh, people are like, you know, uh, siguro parang tinataboy ka because uh, they feel like you don't belong there. But uh, we were using the facility to its um, maximum for us to be able to uh, bring out the potential of the players and when we were given the chance to play on the pitch um, thanks to uh, the Quezon City Science uh, High School um, I mean yeah, it was it was great it was fun we were able to play on the pitch however our problem there was um, you know uh, one one problem that we have experienced was uh, when there was a school program in uh, Kesai uh, we have we had to wait uh, for all the cars to leave uh, the field because they use the field unfortunately they use the field as um, you know a, a parking a parking lot but nevertheless uh, hearing uh, that we have coaches like coach Noel coach Roxy uh, taking care of our grassroots and our youth development teams the future really is bright if if you saw on our last episode with Harvey Gayosa that we have a bright future here in football Ewan ko kung anong klaseng LED light ang binigay sa atin ni Coach Noel and Coach Roxy. Right now, knowing that we have uh, these type of coaches, not only with Loyola but with other teams as well, we have these type of coaches who are very passionate in what they do and uh, very um, you know uh, goal-centered to bring out the best of our youth players and uh, siguro hubugin sila to be the next Chiefy Kaligdong, the next Ayan Araneta, the next Phil and James Young Husband, the next Harvey Gayoso, uh, or whoever player it is, uh, so long as they will represent the country. Um, you know, uh, Glenn, your, your final thoughts on the discussion that we had today. Well, I would just like to add to what uh, Papi Kent and uh, Johnny Pampa has already added. Um, I've written about this uh, last Saturday, and I cannot stress it even more, just like what uh, David's already stressed out. Football is never for the elite. It never was. And accessibility is in our I mean, I, I am looking forward to how the Philippine football would be progressing in the future, because looking at all these bright coaches and all of these passionate fans and all of uh, this, all of the effort that we can see all coming together for the love of the game itself that in itself is something that hindi mo basta bastang hindi basta basta mawawala it's something that we've already started building and it's something that i know will keep growing so looking at uh, what they have in store for us adding yun nga yung previous interviews natin with uh, Harvey Gio. so i'm really looking forward to how uh, philippine football would be developing in the next few years uh, I mean, uh, look at it this way. Ten, year, uh, ten years ago, we were nothing. We were whipping the whipping boys, boys of, of Southeast yes. Asia. Whipping boys of Southeast Asia. Tambakan, you know, they just 
play with us for the goal difference. At nakaka, nakakalungkot man isipin. Pero yes, that was the mentality. And then again, 10 years after, yun nga, we're here. And it, this kind of football revolution isn't really something that should be happening in just 10 years. It's something that normally takes a longer time. But we're here. And knowing that we have a bright future ahead of us, knowing that we have all of these bright minds, all of these passionate hearts uh, fighting for uh, the existence of football, I I know that it's it's going to be uh, it's gonna be alright. So what I'm really looking, in, I what I really um, wanted to uh, wanted to see in the future is more participation from the LGU, not just for schools, but as far as providing the opportunity for the kids, for the grassroots to experience the game. Bakit nga ba masikat si basketball? It's because basketball has been made so accessible that it's almost literally being shoved right down the kids' throats. When it comes to school programs, basketball lang ang laro, volleyball lang ang laro. Mm-hmm. Well, there are a lot of sports. And I'm not just saying football here. We can excel in plenty of sports that does not require height, that makes use of our small, bod- uh, small build, our agility. I mean, there's plenty of it there. But being a passionate football fan, I want to push football further, uh, a little bit more further ahead than the other sports. But just uh, it just comes to so that... What we really re- well, what we really need in order for both the grassroots and the youth teams and everybody else to push forward is exposure, and the LGUs can provide that by just simply adding or tweaking their um, their the infrastructure that we have. Because it's pure basketball court, ang itinatay pure basketball jet. And I don't have anything against basketball. Because when Gilas plays, when the national flag is on their chest. I will bloody watch that game, mm-hmm. and if I had the opportunity, I would even jump with the ultras and scream with them for basketball. But that's the thing: basketball is being given too much attention that other sports are being neglected. And I really want everybody—not just—I uh, want not just the government, but everybody, the, the LGUs, the, the fans. Everybody needs to chip in, push this a little bit further. And I I know that the efforts being done by uh, by our coaches, by Coach Noel, by Coach Roxy, and pretty much every other coach and team managers in all of the other clubs and academies in the country is really going to um, it's really going to build into something beautiful. And I'm really looking forward to it. And that's why that's why I joined you guys so that we could push this. Uh, this further along the future, so it's been an honor to uh, uh, join the, this podcast with y'all. Wow, grabe naman yeah. yon. Anyway, um, actually, ako, ako ang masasabi ko lang jan is, eto lang. Um, I mean, I already said my piece, but I just want to reiterate uh, with with what uh, Coach Maor earlier said with the symptoms and the disease. We have already seen the symptoms and the disease itself. This is your cure. This is the cure that we are looking for. If you want uh, to avoid what happened with uh, what's happening right now with Ceres or what happened with Davao or with Meralco, um, this is what you do. You uh, you start from the ground up. You start from the you start from the ground roots. You 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 build it uh, from the ground up, and then uh, yeah, Coach Mora, this is this is probably the cure that we are looking for. Once. Uh, LGU starts to see that there is a bright future for the kids among their locality, their city, their barangay, or whatever it is. Once they start seeing the potential, I'm pretty sure they will give their support to it. Because, um, case in point, Quezon City has done that with their Quezon City Football Club. Valenzuela City has done that with their street soccer program here. Um, if not for this COVID-19 pandemic, we have season three of the street soccer program here in the Phil- uh, here in Valenzuela, here here in our locality. We're in um, thousands. I'm not saying hundreds. Thousands of kids attend these sessions in several barangays or districts here in Valenzuela. So um, it goes to show that if there's a bright future. Your LGU, your locality will really give their support to you. Um, siguro, uh, just 
for us to um, you know uh, bring in our um, uh, uh, members as well of the panel although they cannot join us right now we were able to get their uh, you know um, oh yeah uh, Tondo FC sorry uh, uh, David Ton uh, Tondo FC uh, their program is really amazing as well so those are the things that you can look into um, w with the other members of the panel that we do have we have uh, Saya Haruda of Saya Graphics and uh, John Eleven Gozon of uh, Ultra Ceres uh, we were able to get their statements on uh, what happened about their club uh, here's what John Eleven Gozon said we can't deny now we're really greatly affected or there were great affected of the news but I personally uh, truly understand the situation where LRY is at right now and with the club name and owner change I guess I'll be a casual supporter lang muna my loyalty is the Ceres Negros FC and LRY hasta mapatay I wish the new owner best of luck in their campaign and ito naman si Saya Haruda the one who creates the graphics that you can see uh, sa aming uh, podcast is um, ito Ang sinabi niya is, As I consider myself as a part of the Ceres uh, family, I'm saddened by the fact that it has to uh, it has come to an end as a Ceres Negros team. But I'm hoping for the success of the team's future games or matches. Ceres Negros has been instrumental in molding me as an artist, to which I am so grateful. Boss LRY has been so appreciative of my work, and because of that, I am thankful. I am still looking forward to work with the team, and if given a chance, if given a chance, Ceres Negros will always be Ceres Negros. So, ito yung sinasabi natin. Um, I, I think, oh, ay na. Ito yung sinasabi natin na uh, whatever change of ownership, change of name it is, the legacy, the history of the club will always be there. Uh, they will always support uh, Ceres Negros or whatever the name of the new club is gonna be. But nevertheless, um. Uh, yeah. When one chapter of a book closes, another one opens. We were able to see how uh, Loyola FC Academy or Youth Academy's story is coming up. Uh, give it three, four years from now, two, three years from now, alam Kentian, the plans of the club. Uh, give them enough time. I'm pretty sure you'll see them in the top flight again. Uh, once football resumes, um, catch them. Uh, the Film Life Sevens Football League uh, with their with their Division Two teams, U19, U17, or even U15 players playing with their senior players as well. Um, ultras, and, ultras cheering U15 and, players, and even Frente Naranya <laughs> cheering the youth players. These youth players, I mean. This is the atmosphere that we're looking for. This is something that we're looking forward to seeing. Um, I'll just take this time to read the comments of our uh, of our um, you know uh, viewers. Uh, Coach Aaron Flores, thank you uh, uh, for the love of the game. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Coach Aaron, Coach Kit, Coach Trolls, Coach Ding Dong, uh, coming from Kent. Uh, from Veronica Dorlas, football brings people together. Give a kid a ball and just look at them play and connect. When you uh, say the Netherlands, one of the first thing you mention is football. Hopefully that uh, that time will come here in the Phil or that will come to the Philippines too. Roxy has that running in his blood, Dutch Filipino. You got this and keep following your dream. Coming from Carson, well done all, amazing episode. Kent, I'm sure is really happy about the Loyola development. Coach Rox Dorlas, well done. Respect. Uh, well done, friend Naranya, for the amazing support. Kudos to all club football fans who has been there. Um, Giancarlo Katahan, Viva Loyola FC. Um, Maris, Adamos, Manuel, Go Saya. Um, actually, sa ating uh, group chat amongst the gang, uh, Saya said that this uh, podcast eh, napakamalaman ng naging usapan ng podcast na to. And, uh, ayun, uh, thank you so much to all of the viewers that we do have. We still have, you know, up to 20 watching us. I mean, it's unprecedented by this time. Feeling ko nasa 10 na lang tayo or 5 na lang yun nanonood but uh, we still have about 20 of you guys watching us so thank you so much. I would like to give a special shout out to as well to my uh, dearly beloved girlfriend for sticking with me despite the hardships that we do have right now. Um, we'll, we'll get through this. Thank you so much and uh, I'll talk to you after this podcast. So ayan. Um, plugs! 
Graphics by uh, Saya Graphics, um, uh, Huddle PH. Uh, join us as we bring you um, uh, um, unbiased um, news through Huddle PH. Hashtag join the play, hashtag run the huddle. Uh, Sama mo si Ken and eventually uh, si Papi Glenn. Um, sulit yung 2 hours sabi ni Alerion Fuerte a sh- um, plug as well for the What's Up show the What's Up Football and F1 show by Johnny Pampa uh, catch us tomorrow I think uh, tama tomorrow uh, we'll be discussing football again um, ano pa ba? and Formula 1 and Formula 1 uh, The Six Yard Box Burgers and Sports by Glenn Casas uh, yan maraming maraming salamat yung burger mo inintay na namin pag uh, pag yan lumabas kami una niyan Ken ikaw meron ka bang shout out oh, oh, sige daw shout out sige to syempre Loyola F <laughs> ayan <laughs> thank <laughs> so kay coach uh, pre coach Roxy and coach Noel na pumayag talaga kayo na maging guest sa podcast really appreciate it um shout out din to all of the coaches sa academy uh, coach Aaron Flores coach uh, Charles Villarino coach Kit Salangit coach uh, Dingdong Fornea sana okay kayo kay Mm. Coach Ma'am, Ding Dong for Nea. Ma'am Marys Manuel. Uh, shout out. Uh, special shout out, shout out kay Sir Raymond Deo Mampo na may anak na dalawang poging player. Uh, so, um, shout out din sa Prente Naranha. Sabi daw ni Louie. Uh, sabi <laughs> niya, ano? Uh, Sabihin daw sa atin na hindi lang daw ako daw yung wet, buong friend na ran na wet daw. <laughs> Matik! <laughs> Narinig nila. Matik! Oo, sigurado! Matik! <laughs> sigurado! Kaya uh, yun. Um, Ay, sorry! Singit ko lang. Special shoutout oh. para kay Kenta. Para kay Kenta. Special shoutout sa lahat ng single na babae dyan. Naghahanap na po siya ng tutulong sa kanya na makapagpasok yeah. ng player sa Loyola FC Youth Academy. Mabait po yan, walang ginagawang masama, walang bisyo. Kung uminom, isa lang ang iniinom. Isang bote lang po Taong iniinom disente. yan. Napaka-disente po niyang nilalang na yan. O, kita mo ngayon pa lang sa show ko, binubugaw ka na namin. What more, buka? So, ano pa? Meron ka pa bang babanggitin, Kent? Um, meron pa. Ayan, oh, meron go. Pa. Uh, go, go. And, yun, um, team sa Huddle PH, um, said... Jeff, uh, Mark Anthony, um, thanks. Uh, and ano dun din sa mga uh, CP48, uh, MNL48, uh, ay Aubrey Binuya. Uh, ingat ka lang palagi at sana masarap lagi ang pagkain mo. <laughs> and yun nga, um, thanks sa lahat ng nanood ng podcast. Sobrang dami ng nanood tonight. Um, nasubaybayan nyo. Um, Hopefully, ganito sa mga next episodes, not dito. Hopefully. Sulit yung tatlong oras na tayo, pero sulit. Uh, ikaw naman, uh, David, uh, shoutouts or anything else that you'd like to plug? Uh, I'll say something first and then shout out, uh, and then I'll uh, do some shoutouts. Um, obviously, re- re- big respect for ano, Fred Taranja, you know, to uh, cheer for, to chant for the kids. At so, at least the kids get the feeling like, oh, like I'm, I'm like a professional football player. At least, like, there are fans who are, you know, cheering for me or chanting for me. So, uh, shout out for you guys. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Okay, so uh, shout out to you know uh, obviously friendly Naranya because you know this is your episode. This is what you wanted. This is what you want to hear. All of you are wet, so make sure you keep dry. <laughs> Kay bakamakaman tayo, so just keep safe. Tamang inuman, you know? tamang inuman na lang muna. <laughs> tamang inuman naman din. Um, thank you again for the coaches. You know, Coach Noel, Coach uh, Roxy, obviously. Ah. Uh, I want to plug, uh, obviously, tomorrow we'll be recording the, uh, on Thursday, we'll be recording the uh, the Was Up Football and Formula One show. So if you're interested in uh, Formula One and obviously in international football, which is La Liga, Premier, uh, and Serie A, and the Bundesliga, uh, please um, uh, stay tuned to that episode. <laughs> and uh, on Friday, okay, guys, um, for the first time on Friday, uh, sometime, we're going to do something outside of football. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is called the yeah. Bad Titos and Titas Late Night Show. So if you guys want, you know, on a weekend, since you can't go to the bars or maybe some of you guys have liquor ban, make sure you, you know, join us. And if you guys have, you can afford to get the beer or alcohol, just, you know, um, click on our live uh, Facebook and just drink and have a nice conversation with us. Don't forget Friday 9 p.m. on Facebook Live. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yan, yan ang sinasabi ko. 
Kung ito medyo disente pa kami ngayong araw na to, itong apat na nakikita nyo, disente pa kami hanggang bukas. Pagdating ho ng biyernes, magbabago ho yung persona namin. So, I hope, mabilis na disclaimer na lang, the views and opinions of the hosts of the Bad Titos and Titas Late Night Show does not reflect the views and opinions of the hosts and the guest of the hashtag Eat Sleep Breathe Football Podcast. So, <laughs> mabilis ang disclaimer lang yan. Lastly, uh, Glenn... Yes, um, R18 siya, Louis. R18 siya. Yes. So, yeah. R18 yan. Go to the Bad Titos and Titas Late Night Show Facebook page. Like it, share it, follow it. Mag-aningan tayo doon. Lastly, Glenn, go ahead, sir. Yes, of course. Uh, well, I would like to... Say a shout out to my friends, kaso lahat ng friends ko nanonood ng football eh, nandito sa panel na to ngayon eh. <laughs> and, yeah, actually most of my friends are uh, different-headed. <laughs> Pero I still would like to give them all a shout out. I hope that you can give football a chance. Watch the vlogs, watch the blogs, r- uh, read the blogs. And uh, see what football can do for you. And also to all of the viewers na nagtsaga for this Wow, so long of a podcast today, no? Three hours <laughs> yeah. in running. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Pero sulit naman. So, I uh, thank you guys for sticking with us because, you know, wala namang ibang mag-dedicitan uh, dito kundi tayo-tayo lang. Yes, and sir. I hope you guys stick around for uh, the other podcasts that uh, our other titos have in store for us. I would like to shout out to my wife. And, uh, yeah. yeah, she's just in the other room. So, yeah. she's not watching dishes. But she's probably gonna beat me up later for uh, doing another <laughs> shout out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, keep playing, guys. Yan. Okay, and bago ko tapusin ang show, to... Philippines or Filipina Scars by Red Rooster Sports up for grabs. Watch our latest vlog, our review of these scarves sa ating YouTube channel. Ang Tito Mong Football Vlogger, watch the instructions. We will be extending the entries of your raffle until this Saturday. This Saturday, idodraw natin yan on our fan engagement podcast and we hope that we see you on that day as well. So muli, mula sa Eat Sleep Breed Football Podcast team, ako po si Jamer De La Cruz, ito si Ken, Garcia, ito si David Abelia, Johnny Pampa, and dito si Glenn of the Six Yard Box Burgers and Sport. Nag-iiwan na isang kataga. Maraming maraming salamat para sa Pinoy football. Maraming salamat sa inyo. Kita-kita tayo sa pitch. Ingat, and we'll see you soon.